So my vocal isn't EQ'd at all right now and probably doesn't sound great, so let's talk about how to fix that. So EQing vocals is one of the most important parts of sound design, no matter what you're doing, um, whether it's you know for film or television or for anything else, because human ear and our brain is really sensitive to what our voice sounds like. So uh, getting it right is really important, way more important than EQing any other type of sound. And it's also not something that where you can just, you know, find a vocal preset, EQ preset, and just apply that preset. Because vocals sound drastically different. You know, every person sounds different. Different microphones sound different. How the microphone is positioned will make it sound different. I actually have a whole video on positioning microphones if you want to watch that. The room you're in will sound different. So, you know, if you're in a studio versus, you know, recording something on location, that'll sound different. And even the same person's voice will sound different on different days or at different times of the day. People's voices are usually a little bit deeper in the morning and uh, they become slightly higher pitched later on in the day. So really you can't just, you know, there isn't one EQ preset you can use to fix your vocals and make them sound good. You have to intentionally approach your vocals. So how do you do that? Well, the first step is to know what a good vocal sounds like. So uh, the key to that is to listen to different examples of vocals and find um, what certain vocals sound like in certain scenarios. First example, when it comes to things like radio DJs, they typically have a very warm, punchy vocal sound. Um, you know, on film and dialogue, it's typically a little bit more neutral and sounds a little more distant. So just find examples of vocals that match kind of what you're trying to achieve and try to critically listen to them and figure out, you know, how, what is the frequency balance like um, and how is it different from your vocals? That's a critical listening skill that you have to develop, but once you develop that skill, it's really powerful and it'll make it really easy to EQ anything, but especially vocals. I do recommend probably the best sources of vocals to listen to um, are either NPR, the National Public Radio here in the U.S., or um, BBC Radio over in Europe and most other places. Um, NPR and BBC Radio both have really good sounding, really neutral sounding vocals. So um, if you listen to uh, examples of uh, voice recordings from those sources, generally that gives you a really, really good kind of starting point to get an idea of what a really neutral sounding vocal is like. But with that out of the way, let's dive in and actually start playing around with the EQ. So the EQ I have here is um, Isotope Neutron Elements. It's actually, you can see it has more stuff than an EQ, but we're just messing with the EQ right now. Um, so the EQ is uh, a parametric EQ. If you don't know anything about equalizers, I have a whole video on equalizers, so you can watch that. Um, but essentially when we're thinking about EQing a vocal, we can kind of look at the vocal and kind of split it up into different frequency bands, and we can think about each of the frequency bands. The first band would be kind of the sub 100 hertz range. So this range, there's really not much going down there. Um, sometimes there's noise down there. Sometimes um, if there's plosives, I have a whole video on plosives, but a lot of times plosives end up in kind of that sub 100 hertz range. So uh, generally, you can just kind of take a high-pass filter here and just filter out that low-end stuff, and it won't affect the vocal. Now, you don't necessarily want to do this. If there's not any noise down there, if there's not any uh, plosive stuffs down there, there's no point to filter that out. Um, generally, a good rule of thumb with when it comes to EQ is uh, less is more. You want to use as minimal EQ as possible because there are technical downsides to using EQ. I don't want to get into them here because they're pretty technical, but basically just know whenever you EQ something, you're making changes other than just frequency changes. So generally it's a better idea to use as little EQ as possible. So if there's no noise, if there's no, there's nothing below hundred Hertz, um, don't bother filtering that out. In this case, there is a little bit of stuff down there, but that's just a tiny bit of room resonance and stuff. And so really, I don't think that's distracting. So generally, I won't filter that out. 
Now, the next thing to look at is kind of the lowest end of your vocal. So that's going to depend on the pitch of your vocalist. So, you know, for someone like me, you can see my peaks are kind of sitting between 100 and 200 hertz. That's where kind of the lowest frequencies of my voice are. But someone with a much higher pitch voice could be as high as like 500 hertz up here. So it's just something where you have to have like a frequency analyzer like this uh, to see where the different things are going on with their voice. So if we boost um, that kind of lowest frequencies, that'll make your voice kind of punchier and more aggressive. Uh, it also can make your voice boomy and boxy. Generally we say kind of the 100 to 250 hertz range is kind of boomy. And this kind of 500 to 1000 hertz range, we would say that's kind of boxy. So generally boomy, boxy. Um, and again, you know, if maybe you're cueing the vocal for someone and they go, oh, you know, the vocal's a little too boomy, you can cut there. That'll make the vocal a little thinner, but it'll also stick out a little bit of the boom. And up here, again, if they say the vocal's too boxy, you can take out some of that and that'll make everything less boxy. So I'm gonna leave that there. Um, now I know for a fact, so I'm listening to my own vocal right now, but it's kind of hard because um, you know, I'm listening to my voice, not only through the microphone and through my headphones, but I can also hear, you know, my voice conducted through my jawbone, which is why your voice sounds different to you than it does in a recording. But because of that, um, I can't really hear what I'm doing very well, so I can't really EQ it super well. But I do know for a fact that recording with this microphone in this kind of setup, generally there's a bit too much um, around 500 hertz, so I'm going to take out a few dB around 500 hertz, and hopefully that'll sound better, but again, I can't really tell. And that's also why um, it's generally a bad idea to EQ your own vocals as you're talking because you can't really hear what you're doing. So again, generally, your whatever the lowest kind of fundamentals of your voice are, they will be kind of the punch and boom of your voice and um, where they are will kind of affect exactly how they sound. 100 to 250 hertz generally kind of boomy, um, 250 to 1k generally kind of boxy. So uh, those are just kind of words you can use to describe um, some of the different frequency sounds. If your voice is a little lower like mine is, you'll also have kind of the secondary range between 500 and 1000 hertz. That's where some of the first kind of harmonics of your voice are. And again, you can build up resonances there depending on the room. So uh, like I said, uh, recording with this setup, my voice is usually a little boxy and you need to take out a bit at 500 hertz. So you might still, even if, you know, the fundamentals down here, you might need to do some work up here. It just depends again on the recording setup and everything. Now, if we go up um, above one kilohertz or above a thousand hertz, if we look at the 1000 to 2000 kilohertz range, this is also a little bit of the boxy area, but we also would think of this as kind of the, the intelligibility area. So as I'm talking, there's a lot of different frequency content going down. So my vowel sounds are typically going to be this very low frequency stuff. So, uh, ah, uh, I, e, those sounds are kind of mostly down here, but a lot of consonant sounds like p, a lot of those sounds primarily live in the one to two kilohertz range. So what that means is a lot of the consonant sound, a lot of the sound that makes your voice easy to understand sits in this one to two kilohertz range. So if I boost here, it'll sound a little boxy, but the consonant sounds will come out a little bit now, which will make uh, me slightly easier to understand. So if you have a vocal that's kind of hard to understand, sometimes boosting in this one to two kilohertz range can make things easier to understand. And again, if we do the opposite, if we cut here, now my voice sounds kind of thin. Um, it sounds like there's stuff cut out because there is, um, but sometimes it's necessary if there's just too much built up there. But again, because I'm kind of cutting right there, a lot of the vocal intelligibility is gone. It's probably slightly harder to understand me, not too bad because there's not a ton of background noise or background music or anything. But if you're mixing something where there was a lot of background stuff, it'd be a lot harder to understand someone if you cut out a ton, again, in that kind of 1500 hertz range. So the next range we're gonna look at is kind of this two to four kilohertz range. So this is a lot of the same stuff, but up here we kind of get into 
the sibilants. So your s sounds, your s's. You, so you can see those are kind of centered up here. So again, your s's are important because they contribute to uh, intelligibility and how easy it is to understand something. So it's important to think of this area, but often we say, um, if we specifically look, and I'm just gonna set this to 4,000, if we look at the 4,000 kilohertz range, generally we say the frequencies centered around 4,000 kilohertz are kind of harsh. So if I boost here, again, we're kind of boosting that sibilance, but we'd say this range is very harsh and not particularly pleasing. Now, that doesn't mean you should just, you know, cut this range out because it's still important. Again, there's sibilance there. There's important stuff going on there. But if you end up with too much here, you would say the vocal sounds kind of harsh. So if someone, again, if you're EQing a vocal for someone and they go, oh yeah, that vocal's too harsh, generally the solution is just to take out a little bit at four kilohertz. So the next range um, is kind of our six to 12 kilohertz range. If we look up here and boost up here, generally we say this, again, this area is centered around about 8,000, oops, set that, 8,000, six to 12,000 kilohertz. That's what we would call the presence area. In the real world, um, as you get farther away from someone, the high frequencies fade away faster than the lower frequencies do. So I'm gonna just do that and, whoops bring this. So if I kind of filter this, so I'm kind of cutting out these higher frequencies, I now probably sound a bit more distant. And there's other factors to distance, but the kind of 8 to 12 kilohertz range we call the presence range because it affects how close vocal sounds. So if you want a vocal that's very, very present and right kind of in your face, you know, boosting a bit around 8 kilohertz will make your vocal seem a lot more present. And that's a great trick, especially for uh, either like voiceover or in the music world, lead vocals in a song, boost around eight kilohertz, uh, really make your vocals stand out. Now, the kind of thing to realize is that odds are the microphone you're using already has a boost in this area kind of naturally in the frequency response. So condenser microphones have a natural resonance in them, and usually that resonance is tuned to somewhere around eight to 12 kilohertz and uh, will boost, you know, a few dB in that eight to 12 eight to 12 kilohertz range for you. That's why large diaphragm condensers like this one, this one actually doesn't have a super big presence peak, but some do even very high end ones. That's why they generally make vocal sounds so good because they make vocals sound very present with that present peak or that resonant kind of boost they have in that upper frequency range. But that can be a bad thing. Say you're recording someone's vocals with something like a <clears throat> lapel mic. Generally a lapel mic will be a small diaphragm condenser and it will have that resonant peak. It won't be huge, but it'll still be there. And you know, your lapel mic will generally be somewhere uh, around your collar. But let's say the shot, you know, let's say you're recording dialogue for a film with that mic and you've got a shot that's kind of a distant shot. So it's uh, from, you know, maybe quite a distant away. If you just throw in the audio from the microphone that's like right there next to their voice, uh, it'll sound really present. It'll sound like, even though the camera is really far away, it'll sound like the person who's talking is right there next to you, which might be desirable, but probably isn't. So sometimes your vocal can be too present. And in that case, kind of taking out at eight kilohertz, it'll make the vocal seem less present, make it seem farther away, and it'll kind of push into the background a bit more. So that's just something to be aware of. Eight kilohertz is kind of your presence range, but also you have to keep in mind that your microphone is probably already boosting at least a couple dB in that range for you. So, and again, the most important thing, don't just assume things when you're EQing, actually take the time to listen, hear what it sounds like, and uh, make decisions based on what it sounds like. So our last range we're gonna look at with the shelf filter, generally we look at it above uh, about 12 kilohertz. Now this is the very, very upper edge of human hearing. Our, we generally say our human hearing ends at 20 kilohertz, but um, that can be as low as like 10 kilohertz if someone has minor uh, hearing loss. It can be quite low. Um, <clears throat> for, for me, I know the top of my hearing is about 17 kilohertz, which is pretty typical for uh, an adult around my age. So that's kind of the very brightest stuff. And generally we refer to our higher frequencies as being kind of bright. So if we boost in this range, you can see my vocal becomes very bright. 
but it also comes kind of brittle and harsh. Um, generally, we use harsh to describe kind of the four kilohertz range, but um, we might describe this as harsh or kind of brittle. But it can sound nice to boost in this 12 plus kilohertz range because it makes the vocals, again, sound quite present. And also, um, we would sometimes say in the music world, this gives our vocals air. <clears throat> so this can sound quite nice to boost here, but you have to be kind of careful because boosting above 12 kilohertz usually sounds really nice. It can be quite grating after a while. It's very artificial. You're EQing, it's kind of flat suddenly you boost here and suddenly your vocals sound super bright and nice and it can be tempting to just boost there but a lot of the time if you keep listening to that vocal for maybe five minutes it'll start to kind of wear down your ears and sound not super great so you have to be kind of careful when you boost in that range yeah i usually boost you know maybe one to two db in that range just to bring it out a little bit but don't boost too much because it'll get kind of grating on your ears after a while the other thing you have to keep in mind when you look at that 12 plus kilohertz range is there's not a lot up there. So if you look, you know, my voice, most of the content is centered around 1 to 200 hertz, and then you've got kind of your consonant sounds and sibilance, sibilance sorry, going on down here. But there's not a lot up here. Um, if I was just to stop talking real quick, that gives you kind of a baseline idea of what the background noise in this room is like. And you can see, you know, once we get up to this very highest range, the stuff coming from my voice isn't that much louder than the background noise. So if we're boosting up here, yeah, we're boosting the vocals, but odds are you're bringing up your background noise quite a bit too. So if background noise is a problem, boosting that range can make the problem even worse. Now you could potentially take a filter and just filter out the top there if you have a ton of noise up there um, and you want to kind of get rid of that noise. But again, because this range is so important to how present vocals sound, my vocal probably sounds kind of distant now and not super great. Um, so generally you don't want to just filter out the top in there. The top end's still important, but you want to be really careful with how you filter it. Um, you know, in the low end here, sometimes when I'm deciding, you know, how how boomy, um, do I want, how punchy do I want my voice to sound, you know, I might boost, you know, up to 10 dB, or I might even cut up to 10 dB, again, depending on the mic used and all the recording setup. But when I'm working up here in this very high end, you know, I'm not going to do more than about 2.5 dB. When you're working that real high end, unless you have a serious problem with how things were recorded, you generally don't need to do very much on the high end. Just real subtle tweaks can really make a big difference. And another thing to keep in mind, too, is... Um, this vocal range from about 1 to 4 kilohertz, that's where our hearing is most sensitive. So real small, gentle changes there can make a big difference. Whereas at the lower end, you might need to do some pretty drastic changes. But again, don't change something just because. Don't just, you know, move around filters and do a bunch of stuff like this. Because there's no point. I don't know what this sounds like. Like, I can hear myself, but I, like I said, I can't hear what I truly sound like through the microphone. So I don't want to just you know, randomly boost willy-nilly just because. I want to actually take the time to listen, hear what it sounds like, and make specific decisions with how I'm EQing based on what I hear. I'm going to open up this preset manager here. and See, there's a whole dialogue section, and I have a couple of presets in here, actually. I don't really use them anymore. Uh, but look, there's an NPR voice. Um, I get rid of the compressor, and you can see this just kind of filters out all the mids. That's not necessarily a good thing. That's not necessarily helpful. There's a control boxiness, and that will control boxiness, but um, it depends on exactly what frequencies the boxiness is kind of centered on. Yeah, this is taking out boxiness, but it's not necessarily taking out the right boxiness. You know, brightness, again, we're kind of filtering out the low end, and we're boosting the high end about 2 dB, pretty typical what I would do. But um, this assumes that your vocal needs more brightness. So I'm actually going to reset this and just turn it off. So now there's no EQ. But presets aren't necessarily a bad thing. But I would recommend just never using EQ presets because they, they're just not necessary. They don't save you that much time. And they're really just not exceptionally useful because every scenario, especially when you're EQing, the human voice is going to be drastically different. So just listen. Listen to what a voice sounds like and listen to 
what EQ it needs to get it where you want it. So I think that's the biggest lesson, the biggest takeaway from when it comes to EQing vocals. Yeah, you want to think about those different frequency ranges. Sub 100 hertz, probably not important. 100 to 250, boom. 250 to 1K, box. 1 to 4K, intelligibility. 4K, harsh. Um, 8 to 12K, presence. 12K and above, air. We can use those words to describe those different frequency bands, and that can help us to make decisions about what we need to change, but don't change something unless you have a specific goal in mind, a specific issue that needs to be fixed to make the vocal sound how you want it. So yeah, that's the biggest takeaway from this. There's no one EQ preset you can use. You have to use your ears, know what a good vocal sounds like, and EQ based on that. So anyway, that's it for this video. So hopefully it was helpful. If so, please hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any more questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, including I've got a lot more upcoming videos on sound design, including a video where we go more into detail on different types of microphones and specifically how they can affect vocal sounds, um, hit that subscribe button so you see those upcoming videos.